how do we get to this part to replace it? Uh, there, there are a couple of different ways, but the way I did it, uh, which I, I believe is probably the easier way, is um, you see the hole right there. Uh, this this bolt goes came out of that hole, so it holds this. Uh, it, that holds. Uh, it, you loosen that, take that bolt out, put it on top of your engine to save it there. Uh, and then you can move this uh, wiring tray here. Uh, now some people unhook these right here uh, and unhook this over here, but uh, I find it easier just to uh, raise that up and take the bolts out. Uh, there's two 10 millimeter bolts that you have to use a wrench if you do it this way. Now you can lift that all the way up out of the way, undo the whole thing, and fold it back out of the way. But then you've got more connections to deal with, and in my dealings with these connections, uh, they're subject to break or give you a hard time. Uh, so this bolt, the problem doing it this way is you, uh, you have to take these snaps loose raise this up and get to this bolt. Let me raise it up. Get to this bolt that you see right uh, right there. And you can get to that with a box end wrench and you can loosen it. Now this is already loosened. I've got it ready to come out. There's another bolt uh, with a 10 millimeter head right here goes in this hole right here where my wrench is and it's out it's right here so with those two bolts out I can uh, and I've unsnapped this where it's held onto the uh, rail and I unsnapped it here which is held onto the rail I can lift that up enough to swing that and of course take these off to swing that down out of the way. So now my uh, rail holder is down out of the way. And so that gives me, now this, these were unhooked and this was unhooked from here to the solenoid. And uh, before I did that, I unhooked this, uh, this, and this, which uh, are the wires going to the coil packs for the spark plugs. Now to unhook those, uh, basically just uh, push in on this release tab right here and you'll see some movement there and that releases a little snap and then you lift them off by gripping on the grippers here now if you can't quite get them with that you can grip them carefully with pliers while you're pushing in on that tab and pull it there uh, so Got this up out of the way. Got this plate, this black plate, out of the way. And you can, uh, now some people unhook it in, in here, I believe. I've seen on another video. Uh, now, I would also just go ahead and take this, take this tube out of the way. Because it's not, it's not that difficult to, to, uh, let me set my camera down and get it reset. Okay. Take this out of the way. And this out of the way. Two little spring clamps. Just bear with me. It's a little cold and a little windy out here. Let's try to get those off without hurting it. Don't you know the hardest one to get to is always the one that's stuck the most? Okay, that's coming off. Alright, get that out of the way. Now you can see we can get 
to these either. Now, uh, it's just three 10 millimeter. Now I've already loosened these three 10 millimeter bolts. Holding it on. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that back off just for uh, demonstration purposes so you can see it. I didn't tighten them all the way. Now there is a couple of things you need to be careful of when you do that. And that is, uh, well, start with, just make sure you only take these three off. You don't want to take the base off. And the base is, uh, this This bolt holds it on, and the bolt holds it on down here. Uh, if you replace the whole thing, including the base, uh, it's a whole uh, bigger operation. You have to, uh, if you want to replace the base, you have to take, uh, there's air intake off, you have to take the uh, valve cover off. You have to unbolt and loosen the valve, the uh, actual, the rocker arms, the rocker arm shafts. Lift uh, that up and slide it off the end of the uh, rocker arm shafts. So uh, that's a very difficult problem. Now uh, there's this metal plate in here. And there are some two little dowels, metal dowels, that uh, can come out. Okay, this is your two metal dowels, one right here and one right here. This is your plate. It's got a gust of wind. Let me. Uh, Set this camera up over here. Okay, so the gasket is on. Uh, the new gasket is in there, right in here. You see the new gasket right there. And then you have this plate here. And you have the new gasket in there. Now I like the gasket, the new gasket. I was a little critical of it to start with. This is a Dorman brand, by the way. Dorman brand cover, uh, about $110, $20. Uh, if you get the whole unit with the base and the top from Honda, you're going to spend uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $200 to $250. I, I believe these are going to seal good because the the o-ring gaskets are thicker than the groove so when they go in and they get tightened they'll press down pretty uh, pretty good against this plate so I just want to show you that make sure these uh, your gaskets are in good make sure your dowel pins are in good uh, and make sure your dowel pins stay in when you turn them in like this I, I did have one came out on a previous installation and I had to uh, reset it. Now you can tell when they're in because it won't slide. You're holding it down, it won't slide. So my dial pins are in place, my gaskets are in place, uh, and I'm ready to bolt it down. Now, be careful bolting it down because you don't want to strip the threads. Uh, these are steel uh, bolts going into aluminum and uh, you need to know that uh, if you get a long handled uh, breaker bar or ratchet and really tighten down on those things you can strip them out and then you've got a whole new uh, you've got a whole new thing to deal with. Of course, if you stripped them out, you just have to replace the bolt, the uh, the base there. Uh, but all right, feel pretty good about 
having a, that in place. Hand tighten it until you get them all the way down. Hand tighten them this way because uh, you can make sure if they'll turn in easy like that by hand, just turn it on the uh, socket, then you're not you're not cross threading. All right, so everything's down. Now, the way I tighten something like that, a small screw, let me get, uh, let me get back a little bit so I can show the technique that I, I've come to use over the years. Let's see. All right. You see the ratchet on a, on a smaller screw like that, I never grip down here on the long part of the ratchet. I make sure with one hand keep it uh, straight. With the other hand, I'll grip, grip it about like that, okay? Because if you grip out here and you get a lot of leverage, you can strip it. If you grip here, you can feel when it gets tight. So, uh, Grip it there, tighten all three snug. Okay, they're all snug pretty much. Just with what you can do with, uh, with this type of a grip right there, just kind of snug, all right? Now, I can feel it's tight. I wouldn't go more than get them snug and still give them a little bit. I would not go probably another eighth of an inch. I mean eighth of a turn once they're snug. Actually, they're so snug now in their bottom. If you if you torque on them much more, you're going to start pulling threads loose. So just not even a uh, eighth of a turn after they're snug. Just another small bit of a turn. You just want to make sure that all of them are tight. Now there are torque specifications, I'm sure. And the good thing would be to get those torque specifications and use a torque wrench. I remember how tight they were when I took them out. They were all consistently the same. Uh, tightness and so uh, I used that uh, that kind of a idea to get them back the same tightness and I've worked on uh, aluminum engines for many many years so uh, I've tried to find a uh, Tried to develop a good personal technique that won't uh, that won't strip out aluminum. Okay, so tightening now. Now I've got my rail back in. Tightening that 10 millimeter headed bolt right there. Bringing it on down. Okay, not sure if I might fast forward or uh, cut out a portion of this. Pretty easy to see what I'm doing here. But we'll check it out. Uh, this, this repair is not, in my opinion, not a real difficult. It seems difficult when you first look at it and you see all this stuff on top. Getting access to it is the most difficult part. Moving these, uh, moving this uh, wiring rail and uh, track rack and that type of thing. Uh, putting this 10 millimeter bolt in right here might be uh, a not easy thing to do. Just take a look at it and see how hard that's going to be. I usually don't work 
too well with these plastic uh, gloves on. In a situation like this. But with it being cold and such. Yep, that's what I thought, but I did see it land on the underneath. I'll probably leave that in because uh, that's what happens in the real world. Try it again. And I'll tell you, I'm going to pull my that glove off. Oh, I can feel so much better. And my gloves on the other hand. Still not, but a little bit of an angle, awkward angle, angle. So, camera's a bit in the way. Okay, now I've got more room.